All right. Uh, Big Perk is here, NBA champion Kendrick Perkins. Great to have you, Perk. Stephen A., I'm going to start with you, and I want to make sure that I didn't misquote him. He said it's borderline disrespectful. What do these comments say to you? Well, that Joel Embiid is getting tired of all of this noise about what Ben Simmons doesn't want. Mm -hmm. You know, he's like, wait a damn minute. You know, we we showed up. You didn't show up. And, you know, the thing that everybody has to understand that players are feeling about Ben Simmons right now. Um, and I'm not saying they're casting any aspersions on him outside of Joel Embiid or whatever because they want him back. But the flip side to it is that there are people that are sitting back and going like this, the nerve of you. You don't show up. You don't work on your jump shot. You don't work on your free throws, and you the victim. That's not how sports works. You're a victim when you do the job and you're not appreciated for the job that you do. Not when you're greatly appreciated and people give you a pass on a lot of things, but somehow, some way, you don't produce and it's other people's fault. Mm -hmm. That's what no one's hearing from Ben Simmons. You shot 33 34% from the free throw line. Shaq, Shaquille O'Neal shot free throws better than you. Will Chamberlain shot free throws better than you. Dennis Rodman shot free throws better than you. I mean, this is some all-time epic futility. So Joel Embiid is like, what the hell going on here? We hear, I'm, and now we hearing about you don't want to play with me. What? But having said that, one could argue they're not the ideal pair. One could argue that Joel Embiid gets drafted third overall in 2014, misses his first two seasons, even though Ben Simmons got drafted in 2016, missed his first full season. Joel Embiid missed two seasons. Joel Embiid has never played more than 64 games in the season. He's missed his shared games. He missed 21 of the 72 games last year. These are legitimate injuries, of course, but nevertheless, that was an issue. Yeah. And so you understand what Ben might be saying. It's just that you position to be feeling right now if you've been Simmons in the eyes of a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Perk. Well, I mean, there's several things that I took from what Joel B said. One is that he's ready to sign them papers, them papers and his usher boys, because that, look, that marriage is over. After that interview, it's no, it's no you know, fixing that, okay? That's the first thing. Second of all, right, he didn't tell a lie. He didn't tell one lie. And when you look at what he said, when you talk about them losing Jimmy Butler to keep uh, Ben Simmons, he didn't lie about that. Everything that the Philadelphia 76ers did, the moves that they did, getting Seth Curry, getting Danny Green, more shooting, more spacing, it wasn't because of Joel B. It was to accommodate Ben Simmons. Joel B could play with anybody. Ben Simmons can't. Okay, third of all, this is what we're not realizing in that message. You know, I'm appreciating Joel and B for his leadership because the season is about two and a half to three weeks away. Now he's knowing that Ben Simmons is not coming, but he's he knows that, hey, I got to worry about the guys in this locker room. We got to be ready to go to war. So I'm going to go out here publicly because Ben Simmons is not answering the phone or returning anybody text messages. So I'm going to jump out here publicly and I'm going I'm to go into the fence and speak up not only for myself organization, but for my teammates. And he gave us the edit version. God knows what he is saying behind the scene in the locker room saying, hey, let's get it, man. Look, he don't want to play with us, whatever. I've been in locker rooms like that. And I'm going to say this. People better be careful if and watch out for the Philadelphia 76ers because things like this only bring a ball club closer. And I wouldn't be surprised if they get off to a hot start and be one of the best teams in the NBA. Hold on, Perk. I got you. Before we move on, because yeah. we got to move on to another subject. Really quickly, Molly and Perk, Ben Simmons saying that and Perk highlighting that it's over also kind of made things difficult for the Sixers as well because now you it's almost like you got to get rid of Ben Simmons yeah. even more. Yeah. Absolutely. And other teams know that. And remember. So they might under, try to come yeah, to cut back Big more. Perk's right 70% of the time, all the time. You know those statistics. <laughs> the NBA, I love you, Perk, has reached the 95% vaccination threshold of its players, reflecting a steady rise that's great since the opening of training camps this week. League sources told ESPN on Thursday, a player still believed not to be vaccinated is Kyrie Irving. With his Nets, one of the favorites to win it all, they are the favorite, 
Uh, what to do about Kyrie with his questionable availability considering New York's vaccine mandates has been a hot topic. Most recently, Shaq weighed in on what to do about Kyrie. Here's the big fella. I would go upstairs and say, get him up out of here. Mm. Get him up out of here. You, you, we, we, we go in with a two punch and a great shooter and some great battles like we got. Get his ass up out of here. Because now every day I have to answer questions about him and what he's doing. Now. Get his ass up out of here. Whoever owns the Brooklyn Nets, get him up out of here. Wow. I want to start with you here, Perk. That's a really strong take. Obviously, we all know the talent, but it's starting to become some trouble with it as well. I know it's a big personal decision. What's your reaction to what Shaq just said, that they should get rid of him? Well, you know what? Shaq is absolutely right. And, and here's why, right? And he's, to me, he's sending a message to the franchise player, the guy that holds the keys over there, and Kevin Durant. And we all know that, yes, Sean Marks is the general manager and he's, you know, he makes the trades and come up with it running the front office. But guess what? Everything is ran by Kevin Durant. And so Shaq is saying, I was a franchise guy. I was that dude. And look, if you're trying to win a championship, you need everybody to be 100% in. Now, I know it's a, it's, a, it's a touchy subject when it comes down to being vaccinated and things to that nature. I'm not here to dive in that, into that. But he's telling Kevin Durant, hey, man, listen, you have a chance to do something. You have James Harden. Don't let this man be a distraction. Sometimes you got to be, be man enough to walk upstairs and pull up. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.